So I've got another 5.8 uh, gigahertz patch antenna for us to take a look at today. And uh, it is uh, apparently a 14 dBi of gain antenna. I've jumped up a little bit in price in this one. This is uh, now into the uh, £20 plus mark. I paid uh, just a little bit under £20 for this from a seller off Amazon. Although looking at the box, it does seem as if it uh, was probably a return, but it might just be uh, the box itself banged up when you know they've uh, stored it because the antenna itself did come in a uh, sealed plastic bag so it's definitely not circular polarized it's uh, linear uh, polarized and uh, as i say it is apparently uh, 14 dbi so we'll give it a test straight away but uh, one thing i can say it's got some weight to this whether that's uh, you know quality with the uh, you know a more solid that reflector on this I don't know or the uh, you know possibly even the plastic housing itself adding to the weight but it's definitely got uh, quite a uh, weighty feel to it so here it is on the spectrum analyzer then I've got it set up just like uh, how you've seen normally in uh, previous videos but uh, look at the output on the spectrum analyzer it really is a nice output and I, I would say this is probably one of the best we've seen so far you know because we have jumped up a little bit now in the price range but look how broadband that uh, frequency response is um, interfering a little bit because I've got my uh, hand and arm in the way but uh, you can see how broadband it is from here to here and such a low uh, VSWR in that area there it's really really nice so this is 5.8 gigahertz centered on this uh, black line in the center of the screen here and you can see we've got a very good response uh, up above into uh, possibly uh, the 6 gigahertz region and a very nice response all the way down here so whatever you set your uh, you know your uh, transmitter on your quadcopter and your receiver at you know you've got a beautiful area of frequency to play with there and it works really well in uh, a nice broad uh, band of that uh, spectrum on that frequency so yes very nice uh, frequency response and as I say probably one of the best we've seen so far so here it is on the uh, power test setup then and we're getting just over six uh, milliwatts of power so it probably is operating around the 14 dBi that is claimed but uh, on this particular antenna there's a little circle and it says on the instructions that that's where this, the circle needs to be pointed in the direction of uh, you know the signal you want to pick up so just moving this up a little bit or uh, you know to the side it does make the uh, power drop off a little bit it's got to be uh, lined up dead on that circle to get its maximum power and you can see there when I get it lined up it's almost edging to uh, 7 milliwatts of power so I think this is probably a uh, 14 dBi antenna as claimed you can see I've got it a little bit more spot on there and uh, we're climbing up to uh, around 8 milliwatts of power so it is a particular sensitive antenna it'd be interesting to see what's on the inside of this so there's a signal on the case that I was telling you about that the instructions uh, tell you to aim for this area here and uh, on the, the power test it did seem when I had it lined up correctly the uh, power you know gain of this antenna would jump so be interesting to see what's inside here so it doesn't look like there's any screws it just pops off so let me get the camera and zoom in on this because this is uh, a little bit interesting we haven't seen anything like this before so it's got this white solder mask on the PCB that's making it a little bit difficult for the camera to pick up but basically there's five elements there with a rather strange element just here but uh, you can just make out the elements themselves and the uh, signal paths go into each one of those elements it does look like it's been a, a nicely designed piece of kit and I haven't come across a design like this before so let me just remove the screws and uh, reduce the back re remove the back of the case and then we'll uh, see if we can take a closer look but I don't think it's showing up too well on the camera so when I started editing this video I wasn't happy how, how uh, this part turned out there was just too much reflections for everything to show up on the camera so I've gone ahead and decided to 
uh, scrape all the solder mask off sand the solder mask off with a little bit of emery paper just so you can see what's going on here because it is a very interesting design and you can see the difference between the extra money you pay for compared to the cheap ones that you normally find on eBay so this is the coax coming in this is the signal point here and first off it goes into this rectangle here now I'm not sure what that is doing whether it's some kind of balance or you know maybe something matching to keep everything uh, 50 ohms I don't know but it uh, comes out of that into this first element here now this first element you can see is completely different to the other four elements and again whether that's to uh, keep everything 50 ohms and equally feed out all the RF energy to each one of these uh, four elements here again I'm not quite sure but uh, basically it's shaped completely different you can see a cutout here and uh, a cutout like that is normally to uh, reduce the VSWR of uh, a panel antenna like this but uh, I'll show you an example of that in a moment but basically we go out here onto the uh, transmission line here and again we've got another rectangle here just slightly smaller than the first rectangle and again it branches off into two here and here now these are definitely uh, capacitive points and these you know will keep the uh, signal feed down to 50 ohms so that's what they're doing and again it goes off into this uh, element here and again into this element here but you can see on this branch we've again got a uh, slightly thicker trace probably all to do with matching again uh, the top ones uh, wiggle off a little bit like this with the transmission line and uh, same on this side but again we've got this corner piece here which uh, you know I'm presuming again is to get the matching correctly but you can see the sharp right angle on this one here and that's normally something you don't see on something like this if you look at all the other uh, transmission lines here they're slightly rounded at the corners because you don't want sharp corners when you're uh, you know uh, mapping out your transmission line like this because they will become antennas in their own right so this sharp corner here will be uh, you know producing a uh, secondary harmonic at a slightly different frequency but uh, obviously when they designed this they felt they needed this to keep everything working as it should at the intended frequency so a really really interesting design I'm not 100% sure what everything's doing but uh, I thought I'd scrape it off because you know it's something for us to uh, look at and possibly try to incorporate in the, uh, the basically the series I'm going to be doing where we're going to be designing our own panel antenna for 5.8 gigahertz now that I've got some uh, spare time coming up over the next few months but uh, yeah really really a lot of thought gone into this a lot of the design probably designed on a computer first and then you know produced uh, onto a PCB and then further testing down the line but uh, yeah very very interesting and another little thing that I want to bring up while we've got this here because a few people have said you know when uh, we've got the four elements that it will definitely uh, be around uh, 14 dBi and you can add up uh, you know the elements uh, say this is uh, 3 dBi, 3 dBi, 3 dBi, 3 dBi and add them all up and uh, it'll give you a good indication of the uh, overall gain but uh, yeah it, it's it's a nice little thing that you can do to give you a good idea but uh, things don't quite add up like that when you're designing an antenna so let's say this is 3 dBi uh, and we've got 3 dBi there you can't actually add them together you'll have a little bit of loss and uh, it would be nice in the real world if things uh, doubled like that but it would probably be just under 6 dBi with these two and then as you start climbing up it gets progressively worse so if we call each one of these 3 dBi for instance you probably find that uh, all four together added up would be around uh, 9.5 dBi let's say and uh, you see this uh, quite uh, commonly with uh, helical antennas you can have a uh, extraordinary long helical antenna let's say with uh, 21 turns and uh, let's just say for uh, you know argument's sake that's 16 dbi but uh, you can also have a another long helical antenna with say 16 turns and that'll only be uh, you know a dbi or 1.5 of a dbi less than the longer one so sometimes you know adding uh, things like that 
do not uh, double and add to it exactly as you think because uh, you get a lot of loss and sometimes making an extraordinarily long one isn't really worth it when you if you've got to consider the overall length of an antenna so you know things don't quite add up like that so as i said with this uh, fifth uh, element here we've got this indentation in here and uh, you know it's incorporated into all four of these so it will be an element in its own right and possibly that's how they're getting the 14 dbi having the uh, five elements but this indentation here is a definite uh, signal of an attempt to reduce the vswr of a panel antenna if you have a panel antenna which the feeds are all at the outer edge like here and here and like we've seen on past ones uh, a way to reduce the vswr of that antenna is to put indentations in them or put a uh, feed point roughly in the middle or just a little bit to the side of the middle and uh, just doing that will reduce the vswr in fact i've got something that we can use as an example here so this is an example that I've used uh, as a teaching aid in the past and you can see here we've got two elements that are both identically the uh, same size and uh, this one here has its feed point in the centre and uh, if the feed point was uh, down here it, it would have a slightly higher VSWR than having it in the centre but because it's not always practical especially when you've got multiple elements to uh, have the feed light in the center you can actually cut out an indentation like this one here and have the feed point there and that way you can have multiple elements on your design and just have a trace coming up here which will be your uh, feed line your transmission line and uh, that point would be then in the center of the uh, panel antenna and that's a way of bringing down the VSWR and as for the back I haven't uh, removed any of the solder mass from the back but you can just about make out that we've got cutoff points for the copper here and here so the cutoff points line up exactly with the uh, driven elements on uh, this side of the board here not sure why they've done that but uh, you could have easily left the copper in these areas here and not bothered etching it away it wouldn't change the antenna in any way and it wouldn't really affect it so I don't know quite why they've done that but um, I did with the weight of this expect to uh, find something a little bit more substantial for the back reflector but you can see that the PCB itself is uh, a lot different from the uh, cheap cardboard and the uh, FR4 board that we've seen on the previous panel antennas I'm not sure if it's uh, the proper low loss stuff but it's certainly a lot thicker and uh, you can tell by the weight that it's uh, a lot better quality so I hope you found this one uh, interesting uh, as I say there's a lot going on the, on this board that we can take a look at in the future um, I mean uh, I'll have to do a little bit of uh, homework and refresh myself before we go into it in uh, great detail but it just goes to show you the uh, difference in the price ranges and why you know you'll see a panel antenna probably sometimes for 30 pounds and uh, you'll see another one for eight pounds claiming uh, to do the same thing but uh, you know when you look under the hood they're not quite the same you know there's a lot more design and uh, research gone into this one more than likely than uh, some of the cheap ones where probably somebody's just got a pattern off the internet and uh, etched uh, quite a few out in the uh, cheap PCB houses of uh, China and just uh, flooded eBay with them I mean that's the uh, big difference at the end of the day so I hope you found this one interesting and uh, any comments or questions drop them below I will uh, do my best to answer them or if you know a little bit more detail of this RF design here I'm pretty sure these are capacitors here and here but uh, if you know exactly why somebody has uh, done this especially incorporating that into the corner there but not on this side over here then uh, please let us know in the comments and uh, if you did enjoy it please uh, give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one